is Heartland Hitman's Imperative here. We're going to be going over another replay. Um, as our red Protoss tonight, this is a gold pro uh, Protoss versus Protoss game. Uh, bottom left red, we have Hundred, and our bottom right uh, Protoss in the blue is Hippie Corpo from Heartland Hitman. So, what we're going to be looking at in this game is Hundred trying to do um, a four gate pressure and Hippocorpo, with some scouting, um, will decide that uh, Stargate pressure is best. Um, and we'll kind of see how uh, Hippocorpo decides to make different units with his Stargate um, and the units that are responded with um, by 100. Really quickly, we're going to just talk um, about building placement. So if we go back a little bit here, Notice in our production tab how much earlier Hundred has to pull his probe off the line in order to make sure that those pylons start at the same time. So we already have it down far away from our base, and this has just been pulled for Hippocorpo. So this travel time really kind of unnecessary. Um, he's doing it in an attempt to wall off with these gateways kind of uh, either deny scouting or deny um, a counterattack that would come were he to fail with his forgate aggression. Um, I'm not entirely sure he should do this, especially not at the natural, and especially not in a map with a ramp that's this big. This is going to end up meeting three gateways and a pylon, roughly, to make sure that uh, Hippocorpo can't get a, a land unit through here. A much better option would be to just make his uh, gate his pylon here his gateway here, and then if he really, really wanted to wall off, he could make another pylon here. Um, otherwise, he could use the zealot that you make um, right out of your uh, first gateway before your cyber core finishes to just block off in a very similar manner um, to a forge fast expand against a zerg player, where you just kind of fill in that last little bit of your wall off with a zealot that's on hold. So, we'll also notice that once these pylons are started, Hippocorpo is able to use this, uh, this probe again, whereas Hundred really would not gain anything by bringing this probe back and having to send it out again at 12 supply um, for his gateway. We can see he's going to, to get up to 12 supply very quickly um, and really doesn't have the ability to pull that probe back and get the few extra little bits of, of mineral out of it. So we can see that uh, Hippocorpo is taking from this a pretty convincing mineral lead for an early game development. So at 13 we should expect both gateways to go down, 13 or 14. Okay, started a little bit earlier by Hippocorpo. Um, one note about Hippocorpo's placement. We notice that his pylon is here, kind of snugged up against his nexus, and his gateway is here. His gateway blocks kind of like a pylon line, um, and this gives kind of a more tetris -y feel to where his other buildings are going to be placed. Really, uh, honestly, he would probably be placing a cyber core here, another pylon here maybe. Having these little 2x2 two -two gaps, or having these little hang-offs over here, um, you really kind of want to try to keep your buildings as orderly as possible so that you don't end up in the late game needing to add another gateway and not really having room because you're kind of mishmashed around. So we see this. Um, Hippocorpo is coming to scout and we're going to try to just kind of take note of what he could be looking for to scout. So they're both taking a gas. Um, Hippocorpo's is a tad earlier. Again, this is just kind of because he's had more minerals coming in from the higher probe count. Um, he does pull two probes here to make the cyber core, which is a bit of a mistake. Those are the kind of things we should look at. Um, a quick note, you can actually tell um, when the gas timing was from your opponent. We can see that the assimilator for Hippocorpo says that there's 2,432 gas remaining, whereas the gas for um, Hundred says that there are 2,476. So were Hippocorpo to know this, he could estimate that given four, or, uh, yes, four gas per trip, that he's probably uh, about eight trips ahead 
Um, so this should have come down um, roughly roughly uh, 20 seconds after Hippocorpo's gas. So Hippocorpo could know from this that this gas was a tad late um, and, and probably caused by this probe being down here um, and, and losing some of the mineral that Hundred could have had coming in. And we see Hundred start to take a supply advantage Both cyber cores are finishing. We have work gate researching um, slightly faster for Hippie Corpo than for Hundred. Now, at this point, um, Hundred has waited for Hippie Corpo's scouting probe to be gone to build the second gateway in the forge. This is really what we want to be looking for to kind of tell when this four gate pressure is coming. Once we've seen, that, especially this early in the game, that he has three gateways down um, and this forge kind of seals the deal, he's really going to be pushing probably for a plus one attack, um, kind of a push to, to put a little bit of an edge to his units with the forge, with the upgrade, and to put a, a numbers advantage for him um, with these extra gateways. So we see um, for Hippocorpo, instead of dropping these extra gateways and the forge, he's actually just going to be taking a stalker. Um, and this is a bit more of a defensive play to, to delay some of the tech in order to have that anti-air. Um, this could be to block mothership core scouting, those kinds of things. Um, we notice that the Stargate, again, this is building placement, um, it can't be too close or it will start to block these, but we notice that he's being forced to create some awkward lines with his buildings. Just kind of a, um, maybe a bit of a personal preference, um, but really these kinds of building placements that leave one by one blocks um, or little awkward corners are, are really something that you should try to avoid as a Protoss player. Um, the other big thing I'd like to note is, uh, and this is kind of a, a sign of a gold league play um, of, of somebody that's paying a little less attention to their macro, we have 47 uh, energy on this nexus for 100 and for Hippocorpo, we have 77 energy. Now, if you think about it this way, um, a nexus that's building continuous probes with a chrono boost against a nexus that's building continuous probes without, they will, um, the chrono boosted nexus will end up with a two to one advantage in probe production ahead of the non chrono boosted. Um, in addition, he could be chrono boosting this uh, warp gate research to get that warp gate out a little bit faster. This is a more aggressive move compared to the more economical move of chrono boosting probes out. Um, but the, no matter what you're going to do with it, you really want to be using that chrono boost energy. Um, to some extent, I can understand it as a way to really boost out some of the Stargate units. But at 77, he really needed to put those three chrono boosts to use. At least two of them, he can bank one, really say, you know, I'm going to put out some phoenixes, I'm going to try to put out some oracles, I'm going to pull some harassment with these. Um, I really think they're valuable for that. So I want to keep some chrono boost just in reserve so that I can really pump those out quickly and kind of hit before my opponent would expect it. Um, but, but having three saved up is really inappropriate, um, as is having two saved up for 100 as he's already um, got his tech working, he could chrono boost out this upgrade, he could chrono boost his gateways once they're warp gates to, uh, to reduce the cooldown so that he could produce a larger number of units in a shorter number of time um, if he thinks he has the uh, minerals and gas banked for uh, that, that level of production, and that speed of production. So we see uh, Proxy Pylon going down for Hippie Corpo. Um, with a Stargate play, I actually don't like this. Um, the point of a proxy pylon, especially in um, PvP, is to eliminate that defender's advantage to say that um, outside of robo units, um, I'm going to have my units just as fast as you're going to have your units, but it only works with gateway units. So when we have the stargate pressure, um, you can't make stargate units out of a, a, a warp gate. Um, so this, this forward pylon really doesn't do you much except for maybe a zealot counterattack. Uh, which really, uh, uh, with proper scouting, he would know that that's, it's not a very uh, likely possibility for that kind of thing to get through. He'll probably want all of his resources focused um, at home to defend this push. Um, and we can kind of see again why scouting these things are so very, very important. A four-gate cheese is a really good cheese if they don't scout it. 
in PvP, but if you scout it early enough, he can make the proper units, he can make some zealots, he can really focus on getting defensive units up, and once you've kind of crushed that four gate, especially if there's no proxy pylon to continue the pressure, um, there's really no way to come out of a four gate in an economic way. Um, even with these upgrades started, you don't have the tech, uh, immortals can come out, phoenixes can come out, oracles can come out, things that you can't really deal with can come out faster than you're going to get out uh, Robo Bay and build all of these units. So he really, he's devoting everything to this next push, to this next attack, um, and Hippocorpo really right now doesn't see what he's done. He only sees the third pylon here, which could be some sign, um, but really he, he should have tried to just poke right back up as soon as um, his probe went away or even a bit later, um, once he gets these phoenixes out, he could just take the first phoenix and just kind of fly by and just really quickly see what this build looks like so that he can devote less to tech and more to just plain units and units that will make sense against the unit composition. Because we can see he's got three phoenixes out and he's got a small gateway army. He's looking to make this push, you know, he's going to try to use uh, the micro of the stargate um, to to of uh, the Stargate units to give him a supply advantage, an effective supply, um, to kind of act as, as force fields to split the army and take out some of the ideally uh, zealots or with a small enough number the the stalkers. Uh, but with a mass a mass stalker composition with eleven stalkers like this, really all that's going to happen is he can just uh, hundred can just focus down each phoenix that picks up a stalker and just really say, you know, um, these Stargate units are worthless, uh, they're not really going to do you any good, you've just lost a lot of tech advantage, you've just lost um, a lot of um, gas and minerals that you had, um, and, and really get a convincing lead on Gateway units, which will give him a massive boost um, in this four gate pressure. So we see the proxy pylon being used by Hippie Corpo, uh, but really if you plan this early pressure, I'm not sure Phoenix is excuse me, um, were the best idea for that. I just hit the Windows key, stupid Windows 8. Um, so we see that this engagement starts. There's a bunch of energy um, of, I believe that's two force fields worth, um, or uh, a guardian shield in one force field. Um, he really needs to be using the energy on this sentry to either, um, it, were there more zealots to block the zealots from his stalkers, or to cut these stalkers in half, to make the, a force field here, to make a force field here, to force these stalkers back around so that he's only engaging part of the army at any given time. Um, he's smartly noticed that stalkers will very handily deal with these phoenixes, so he's pulled them back. But honestly, at this point, uh, these, these armies may be similar in cost and supply, but really, truly, Hundred has the advantage in that his units give a hard counter, at least partially, to the units of Hippie Corpo. So then he pulls them back in, and we can notice that Hundred doesn't really have great focus fire, but even with these these sentries that are being or these stalkers that are being pulled up, excuse me, he can just continue to focus these limited number of gateway units, um, and he really has no problem in kind of cleaning up everything that Hippie Corpo has to offer here, and even, no, does not take his uh, Phoenix. Um, at this point, he, I believe, finds this proxy pylon, smartly looks for it in saying, you know, I believe that push was a little too much, um, especially with those Stargate units out. So Hippie Corpo will look to use those Phoenixes to his advantage here, um, but very, very excellent play by Hundred in saying, you know, I know that these are going to be good harassing units, so I'm going to make sure that you can't harass with them. So he gets one, one unit and loses two, two phoenixes. So this was very uh, three phoenixes. So he loses all three phoenixes. Um, this is a massive, massive blow to Hippie Corpo's economy, and that those are kind of units he can't replace. These sentries were a good idea, but we'll see right now that this kind of, the micro needed to correctly split these units here was not, um, was not really used by Hippie Corpo. So we have some force fields give some split, um, but really in, in that engagement, he didn't split the army in half. He more just took two or three units off the top, which is okay, 
but in addition to that, he also lost Zealots. So he's still losing those melee, those close range units, um, because the force fields aren't large enough to push the stalkers back out of their range to those melee units. So we have Hippie Corpo kind of trying to reinforce as best he can. There could be more units coming in right now. Um, but at this point, Hippie Corpo is on low unit count um, with, with high tech units, with things that he can't really continue putting out at a rapid pace. So at this point, this four gate cheese really has worked. Um, so we can kind of watch the rest. He's put out a Void Ray, which I disagree with. The Stalkers will handily deal with a Void Ray, even though he's gotten two kills. It wasn't really worth it to build. Um, those three Zealots could have been better used by making a small Zealot pool here and just kind of trying to block the ramp, maybe surrounding these Stalkers with some of your probes and your Zealots, as we'll see he tries to do here soon with these three Zealots. Um, but Hundred is doing a little trick right now. He's taking the majority of his army and attacking these these higher health, uh, more dangerous units and the buildings while taking only two of these stalkers and using it to run around the majority of the units that Hippie Corpo is trying to attack with, as we as we see here. Um, so he's going to actually save these. Hippie Corpo kind of realizes and tries to go for a surround on these these stalkers. Does not get a proper surround. Um, doesn't really have minerals at this point to be reinforcing properly. Um, so we see that he can kind of almost hold this, but really um, the, the reinforcements by Hundred, even across the map in this matter, um, are good enough um, with, with the kind of failed Stargate pressure applied by Hippie Corpo to take this game. So, so big deals. Hippie Corpo tried to go for two tech paths that are opposing at the same time, um, and even on a two base economy, this is way too much. You're asking too much of your tech, and you're taking too much of your resources away from making defensive units, especially once you've seen these kind of um, four gate or, or aggressive pushes from your opponent. Um, the other big deal is that he hadn't scouted it. Um, the Phoenix is a great scouting unit, even if he just flew it there and flew it straight back, he could just rally point it right about here, just see that this is a continued wall, um, and just fly around, check the other side, see that there are four gateways down for Hundred, and just instantly recognize, put down a forge, put down cannons, or just, you know, uh, produce zealots, produce stalkers, produce sentries, try to get something out so that he could defend his base um, um, against this four gate aggression. But without that read, um, without that, that um, understanding of the unit composition that was going to be coming from Hundred and what kind of a push was going to be coming from Hundred, we see Hippie Corpo try to do a lot and end up with not very much to show for it. Uh, so, so the big deals here, scouting, always very important. He did a good job of scouting with his probe. He scouted the gas. That's a very important thing. He could have seen the gas timing. Um, with, with that resource that we talked about, with seeing the um, remaining resources on the gas. Um, but he did not scout the 4 gate pressure, which really kind of sealed the deal that he was going to end up losing this game. And Hundred, to his, to his credit, did do a very good job of protecting his, his probe line against the continued Phoenix harass, although they could have come around this way over here and kind of picked off this side's gas. Uh, but it's very, very limited Phoenix Harass at that point, um, and there's not much he could do here because this was where most of the Stalkers were. Um, so really, Hundred did a great job of defending what he was going to go with and just kind of sticking to his build path, getting out that level 1 weapons research, getting out what he needed to make his units more effective against the units that Hippie Corpo was putting out. So, I hope you've learned something. Um, this has been Heartland Hitman.